now, Talk Real Estate with Sharon McNamara, sponsored by Boston Connect Real Estate Services. Hi, I'm Sharon McNamara, and you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. Let me share a little bit about my background before we get started. I am the broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate, a boutique real estate firm that is home to over 30 real estate sales and marketing consultants who service home buyers and home sellers throughout Boston, the South Shore, the South Coast, and Cape Cod. Our firm takes pride in assisting our clients in the next chapter of their lives by taking a holistic approach to their real estate endeavors. We believe that every move should be a moving experience. Every week, my real estate team member, Mary Baker, and I, along with the director of Boston Connect Real Estate, Melissa Wallace, provide you with our unique marketing approach to selling homes and share with you our expertise in navigating the home buying process. We like to mix it up sometimes, so not only will you hear our perspective on real estate topics, but you will hear the expert thoughts and opinions of some of our real estate agents at Boston Connect Real Estate and the preferred professionals that we trust. Be part of our roundtable. If you have any questions during the show, please call 781-837-4900. We'd love to talk real estate. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you listen to podcasts at Talk Real Estate Roundtable. If you would like a one-on-one consultation with me and my team or one of the dedicated agents at Boston Connect Real Estate to discuss your real estate needs, you can connect with us at bostonconnect.com or 781-826-8000. Now, sit back, relax, take good notes, and let's talk real estate. And hello to all our South Shore neighbors. You are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. My name is Melissa Wallace, and I am here with my team member, Mary Baker, live and in studio. Hi, Mel. Hi. How are you? How are you today? You know, I'm a little crazed. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little crazed, so I'm hoping that this uh, does not go sideways. (laughs) Not going to go sideways. I had a numerous amount of um, coffee today, so I'm wired. Okay, cool. So you can take the reins. (laughs) Oh, always. Sure. (laughs) Um, All right. So uh, obviously, uh, you know, we are missing our one and only Sharon McNamara. She's actually upstairs um, in in doing a Zoom. Yeah, she's doing a a Zoom webinar. She's expanding her mind. Yeah, about about something. Learning about the market. See what's going on. On. Yeah, learning with the market, and hopefully um, she'll join us next Tuesday and uh, give a little peek, sneak peek of, of what she learned. Hopefully it's a lot. <laughs> I feel like I feel like not last week, but the week before, after I listened to the Brian Buffini webinar, all I wanted to talk about was all the things that I learned on the Brian Buffini webinar. You even brought it up today. <laughs> you were really excited. Oh, yeah, like, I did. Oh, hey. So we're having a casual lunch, and Melissa's, um, she goes, so did you guys catch the Buffini webinar? What did he say that you were so excited we about? We were having a casual lunch with uh, Ginny Wandel, who has been on the show before. Oh, yeah. um, she's a full-time real estate agent here at Boston Connect Real Estate, and she... Uh, we were just talking about everything, Very really, casual. about life, casual. And I just kept, like, not interrupting, but interrupting. I mean, like, have you ever watched Euphoria? Because I'm watching Euphoria <laughs> right now. And Tracy you, Grady. You have, you have a little bit of an obsession when, with Zendaya. Zendaya. Yeah, Zendaya. I think that she's the most beautiful, gorgeous <laughs> woman ever to ever live. And I just, I wish I was her. And I want her to be my friend. And I hope that this show makes that possible. Little known <laughs> fact. And I think we've talked about this on the show, show before, but... Just interesting, reintroducing um, who we really are to everybody out there on WATD. <laughs> when we first met Melissa very, very early on, so I think we did our interview in like May of, gosh, it's like five, six years now. Yeah, like it was 2000, like sometime after 15. Mother's Day or something. Um, and then we had an admin day. So all of the admin here at Boston Connect Real Estate, we were invited to go on the McNamara's boat and we had an amazing day. We went over to Oaks, Oak Bluffs and me and Melissa decided we were going to carpool. And so we were just kind of getting to know each I other. I actually don't really remember this. So I'm, I'm <laughs> just kind of getting to know each other scared. a little bit. And she looks over at me, I'm driving, um, in the most uh, dead serious face and goes, little known fact. I believe that I should be married to Ed Sheeran. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is where we found out that Melissa is absolutely obsessed and borderline in love with Ed Sheeran. And since then, I think it's been a long-running joke and or... Yeah, um, your I, content. I yeah, I just revealed that information. You know, all these years later, I've, I'm still revealing this information to new people in my life. So uh, <laughs> last week, I uh, had dinner with somebody that I've met in the past year, and I I let them know that I'm just completely obsessed. I think that he's my soulmate. I understand that he's married. 
with a child. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know. but there's still a chance. Now so you're saying there's a chance. Yeah, I was uh, I was sad. But uh, yes, I, I am obsessed with Ed Sheeran <laughs> and Zendaya and you know I, I don't just... know why. That just like pop, <laughs> yeah. memory popped into memory my head. Popped and I had, into, I had, yeah, I, had I didn't know where you were going with that, but I'm okay with sharing that information about no myself. Secrets. No secrets here at Talk Real Estate Round Table. No, we're open as a book. Yeah. Um but yeah, a so we were we book. were talking with Ginny Wandell and just we were just being silly today. And it's good to sort of let loose because this industry can be very serious and it should be very serious. We're, very we're helping people transition into, you know, next chapters. And uh, are you looking at your hair? I have no neck. Okay. Uh, she has no neck. So if you're watching <laughs> us on uh, Facebook Live, we're live on all uh, all the, the Facebook pages, all the Connect pages and, um, and Boston Connect Real Estate and all that stuff. So be sure to like us on Facebook. Um, but where was I going with that? See, this is why you can no, So me. we were just talking about how it's nice to have like a casual day. It's and not nice ta- to have a casual not take day. Not each other too seriously or what's going on. In, well, I shouldn't say what's going on in the world, but what's going on in the industry. It's, yeah. it's just nice to kind of peel all of that back sometimes. Yeah. And be people. Be people first. Right? Yeah. So we were just being silly. So I was asking everybody if they watched Euphoria. Uh, did you watch the West Wing? I don't even know how that got brought up. I never watched the West Wing. I just watched this one clip. But I don't know. We were just being silly today. So now uh, let's get back to being serious. Okay. Because you should take the equity in your house pretty seriously. I and thought, that's what I we're thought you were telling me about. you should be serious because you're trying to run this thing. <laughs> um, okay, so tonight we are going to be talking about should you spend your home's e- home equity uh, and, and sort of how you come about to know if you even have equity in your home. Um, so Mary did okay. all this fun research, um, and so I'm going to give the reins to her because I, I – I have a little bit of a headache looking at it, um, but I'll follow along with you since I have it in front of me as well. Um, but Mary is going to be uh, talking about sort of the five year difference um, in, you know, what's been on the market, how you can sort of figure out how much equity is in your home based off of the town and the county. Um, so take it away, Mary Baker. <laughs> So it will, it's all obviously very dependent, right? And I'm not a financial advisor, nor am I a loan officer, but I think the goal in owning real estate, right, is to have a large, obviously a home, a roof over your head, but also have a large asset that you could potentially um, make work for you. And it's like an, it's, it is an investment. Mm-hmm. So when you're investing in stock, you hope that the stock goes up and then you can either trade that stock for higher stocks or take out that money yeah. um, or trade the stocks for actual cash and use it to continue growing your wealth, right? Yeah, well, not to interrupt you, but that's why I was saying that, you know, this industry is very serious because we're helping people with the biggest investment of their lives. Um, And hopefully they can continue to invest in real estate because it is a great thing to invest in. And we'll talk about that as well. I don't know who it was. And if um, Sam is listening, he can he can type it in on Facebook or call in. Um, But there was it's uh, residential, not even residential, but real estate investment is pretty much the most surefire way and or quickest way to grow your individual financial wealth. Um, If you're a long-term investor, so if you started investing really, really young, I'm sure those stats are a little bit different, but most people are buying their first house in there. Um, Right now it's, I think, late, late 20s. So like maybe 29 to 32 is when the average first time home buyer is really getting ready to purchase. (laughs) So you're telling me I have a year to get out of your house? (laughs) 32. Wait, 32. No, you're not even. I'm oh, gonna be 31 next, next week. Yeah, it's all right. I've been calling myself 31. I'm actually Depressing. 32. Um, um, but yeah. anyways, um, but it's the quickest way to kind of grow that wealth because it's one of the fastest increasing assets that you can potentially have and depending on the market, right? Yeah. So reason bringing up this show tonight is because we're in a position where a lot of people have a lot of equity within their houses because we've seen the market just exponentially increase, um, not even just over the past year, but over the past two, three years. It's been increasing, I don't know, even over the past five years of the stats that we're pulling here. But ever so much over the the most recent time frames. So something it's, uh, well, I was going to say the way you would figure out your own equity is obviously based off of, you know, what was the house worth or what did you pay for the house? How much was your down payment? And what is your mortgage? So whatever the difference between what you put down and what your, um, 
not what you put down, what you purchased your house for and what your current mortgage is, that's technically your equity. Even though you paid your down payment, it's technically what your equity in your house um, would be. Mm -hmm. So that's the basics of figuring out, like if you just purchased, but then obviously over time you'll start to make mortgage payments and that will pay down your principal and interest on your mortgage. You'll potentially make an extra payment, which will help pay that down. And every time you're doing that, you're increasing the overall equity within your house. That's the most basic version of how people gain equity. And we'll get into a little bit further um, the other things that you could potentially be doing to get equity quicker, right? Yeah. Well, since everybody knows what we're going to be talking about tonight, if you have any questions for us, you can call into the studio. George will pipe you into us here over at uh, Mattachusa Street. We're not even in Marshfield, but here we are. We're in Pembroke. Um, The number over there is 781-837-4900. Again, we are live on Facebook, so if you are shy and don't want to talk to us on air, you can send us a a little message on Facebook, and we'll be sure to uh, keep an eye on them for that. Okay. Mary, get into your numbers. My numbers. Okay, so first off, I did um, Plymouth, just Plymouth County in general. So over the past five years, um, average sale price has increased from 432, so around about 432 to 613, so 432,000 mm-hmm. to 613,000, um, and that's from 2017 to 2021. So that's an average. So say you only put 5% down on your on your property, most people have gained. And it's really, these numbers are very, very general. So it's not specific to properties that have made major, major improvements to the house because, you know, our stats really can't dictate. Yeah. We can't be in every single house in Plymouth County. Um, but average um, equity has been built or sale prices have increased by $180,000 over the mm-hmm. past five years. Mm-hmm. Um, for some people who timed the market, and I shouldn't, there really is no, and I regret that I just said that, there really is no perfect way to time the market. It's like trying to time the stock market, right? You know, I've I've said it a million times on the show before, but the best time to purchase is whenever you are able and ready to do it, period. So there yeah. really is no true timing it the right way, some people. yeah. Just get a little bit well, lucky. When, pe- when we've talked about it on the show before and when people ask, you know, when is the right time to sell, I, my answer is always when you're ready. There's there's yeah. there's a bum for every seat yeah. <laughs> is, the, is the clean version. But, like, the there's a house for everybody. Version. You know, you have... You have people who are looking for the ranches. You are you are looking yeah. for the capes. Are looking for you know mobile homes the, the, everywhere. Uh, you know the colonials, the the four bedroom colonials, a pool, garage, no garage. And we, like there's there's somebody for every house. Yeah. Um. And you know right now we're not seeing too many properties staying on the market, but you know it does happen. And it and you know just because a lot of buyers in the past few years have been pay like purchasing homes mm-hmm. with um, emotion. I almost said personality, hopefully. <laughs> Some of them do write a lot of personality. <laughs> with emotion, <laughs> you know, offer. I think maybe, and you could probably go into this a little bit more because you work with a lot of buyers, is, you know, are we seeing people sort of get back to not, you know, purchasing with emotions and sort of like reeling it in and being like, you know what, just because I have this money saved doesn't mean I have to spend it. Mm. And that goes with equity as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so there is such thing as negative equity too. We mm-hmm. won't, we can touch on that like a little bit, but no, I, I completely agree. We definitely have seen a little bit of a shift in the market in comparison to where we were even at the end of last year. Like I know a couple of the shows that we were doing at the end of the year, we were predicting or bold predictions were that January was going to be pretty busy. And obviously, uh, COVID has a lot to do with that, Mm -hmm. you know, and and affects how busy the market is um, in that sense. But these past couple of weeks, obviously, everybody knows that, you know, personally, our our team was kind of down and out for a little bit. Me, I was sick through the whole entire month of December, not necessarily with COVID, but I did end up getting it at the end. Um, And then I got hit with a sinus infection. So, and I feel like that was happening with a lot of agents. I just feel like everywhere we looked... It was, you know, this person is, this person is down, they have COVID, they have the flu. This person is down, they have COVID, they have the flu. So I feel like what we saw was a lot of sellers kind of withdraw and back up and say, no, maybe sellers are like, all right, I'm going to hold off until we start to feel the, we hit the 
the spike and then we start to feel it come downward Mm -hmm. and also real estate agents weren't working not everybody but um a group of were not working at their full capacity right so we did see a kind of halt in the inventory coming on but even just recently between I'm starting to feel that shift just this week, even just between last night and I literally just got a text message as as we're on air from clients of ours that have been looking and they're like, oh my gosh, MLS was so amazing today. There's there's these three houses that we want to check out coupled up with the (laughs) three houses. There are three houses. Coupled up with the three houses from yesterday too. So it's like, all right, now the inventory is finally coming out and hopefully, you know, when we were um, predicting that January was going to be pretty busy, you know, this is what, this is what we were talking about and hope, hopefully it stays the same. Yeah. Um, but so with going back to equity within your house, right? So this is just general numbers from, like I said, from 2017 to 2021. So $180,000, that's a lot of money. Say that mm-hmm. that's, and just using that as round terms, cause there's obviously different factors that go into calculating your individual equity. How, what did you purchase the house for? How much money did you put down? What is your actual mortgage? Um, how much, what are your payments? Are you paying extra payments? Have you done major renovations um, to improve the house? Have you refinanced? So there's all those little things that kind of go into it, but just say $180,000, that's what you have sitting in your house. Well, what does everybody say? So so when I say sitting in your house, it's like you're sitting on cash, mm-hmm. right? So it's it's money that you have, technically you own, right? And you don't have accessibility to it. Yeah. So that you don't necessarily, um, you or you aren't using it at, at, at that point in time. Um, and what they, uh, so what I would say, everybody says you make your money work for you, right? Oh, oh. we have a caller. George, do you know what the person's name is? Oh, hello. Okay. Um, Teresa, can you hear us? I can. Is this Teresa Roth? Yes, it is. Oh, my oh, goodness. Thanks for calling. Okay, everybody listening in, this is Teresa Roth. She is a full-time real estate agent here at Boston Connect Real Estate, and she is, like, one of the loveliest people. Oh, I know we say this about everybody in our office, but, like, <laughs> you, you just, you light up a room when you walk in, and I'm not even, like, trying to, like... But you know, hype, <laughs> hype you up or anything but like honestly you just like walk in and you just like everything's cool calm collected we're it's good it's the smile it's the smile so thank you so much I for didn't even tell you guys to do that I didn't even tell you guys for that that was all three the agent that will light up the room that Teresa was all that, that, yeah, yeah 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 that was all three and I, anything for you Teresa well I gotta tell you you guys have just talked all about my life for the last two months in real estate. Okay. So awesome. I have had clients that I've been shopping for, and I keep shopping for and keep shopping for. And throughout the whole month of November and December, four houses that we went shopping for the day before the open house or the day before the showing, someone has COVID and it's shut down. Yeah. So then now they're backpedaling. Not that they don't want to buy. They do. But now they're not in a big hurry. Now they're analyzing things and saying, okay, wait a minute. Let me think about really what I'm doing. I'm not going to panic anymore. Now the buyers are starting to be smarter shoppers. Not that they weren't smart before. They were just in a hurry before. They were caught so, up. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was I'm going to go to this house. The line is going to be down the street. There's going to be 25 offers that are all going to be above asking price. I have to look at a house that I know I'm going to have to overbid on, even though I thought it might be worth it, but I have to do it because I need to get into something. Now yeah. people are backpedaling a little bit and saying, okay, I'm going to think about what I'm doing because this is my money. This is my investment, which means I, the sellers yeah. have to now think about this because it, it's a domino effect. Now the sellers can't say, I'm going to put my house on the market and it's going to be a bidding war the first weekend and I'm going to be able to do whatever I want. Educating the sellers that, okay, I know it's been crazy for a year, but that's not the norm. You want someone who is personally invested in your home. You want someone who is going to want to buy it and be smart about buying it because the last thing you want is someone to back out of it. 
Yeah, I agree. And and getting back to the buyers is they might be getting into the market right now, but us as real estate agents have been doing this for during COVID. This is like now the third year. Like, third, third season. <laughs> this is the third season. Like we we know we're like a well-oiled machine now when it comes to like COVID. Oh, here's another way. We got to go back to this. But it's like that's sort of, you know, been the norm for yeah. us in the past two or so years. So anybody, you know, the buyers that are coming in, they're like, all right, I've sort of been on the sidelines, but now I want to like get into it, but I'm, I'm not going to overpay and I'm not going to like, they're, they're, they are getting a little bit savvy there. We are definitely, um, and to Teresa's point, we're seeing a lot of people start to, or a lot of buyers just kind of not withdraw, but just take their time. Like, um, I actually had a client text me the other day and he was like, Mary, I know we don't get like, you know, a month to look at the house, but you think I could get like a day or two? And I was like, sometimes, sometimes you will, sometimes, sometimes you won't, but here's the reality of the situation. If it feels right for you and it's, it's the right house, Mm -hmm. then we take it from there. If it's not, we walk away. We don't get pressured by what other people are doing. You know, the right house is going to come along. And I think Teresa, you're nailing it on the head with sellers are going to start to have to, with this buyer mind shift change, sellers are going to have to try and reevaluate what you know, it was before the market was, all right, well, I'm going to put my house um, up for maybe like on the higher end of the range and let the emotional value of what buyers are willing to pay kind of boost me up over um, what I thought I could get and be absolutely astounded. That still will happen sometimes, but it might shift from being the norm to the exception, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And it depends on the house in the neighborhood. Like Certainly. last week, I held a first-time home buyers class last week, and oh, I did had you? Um, yes, you did. I did. Oh. I had eight people in the class and two on Zoom, nice. and it was awesome. But it was really great to talk to first-time home buyers and say, "Hey, this is really what's going to happen. This is your process. This is how it's going to be, so that you know the step by step. These are the contracts you're going to look at. I want you to see them up front. I don't want you to sign a contract." In, a, in haste and, and panic because it's a lot of verbiage. I don't want you to get a 15-page purchase and sale and say you got two hours to sign this, you know? I want you yeah. to know what you're doing. Buying a house and getting married are the two biggest commitments of your life, and you really need to have your mindset wrapped around what it's all going to be about. Or else it's not as enjoyable, and you should no. be able to enjoy your first home purchase. It should be fun. It should not be so stressful that you want to just run away. Your hair is gray at the age of 30? Yeah. <laughs> Fully gray. You know, it should <laughs> be that way. It should not be that way. Yeah. And realistically, you know, it, it also it really has to do with the realtor you choose and the mortgage broker you're going to work with. Those two people will make your life so much better if you're with people that you trust. Hundred percent. Yeah, I agree. Oh, you're Teresa, a fresh air. You're, 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 you're always <laughs> you're always a wisdom speaker over there. Words of wisdom from Teresa Ra. That'll be your like new thing. You should do a podcast. Words of wisdom with Teresa, Teresa Ra. Oh yeah, just like that. With, you know what? You can be, it would be wow, scary. wow with Teresa Ra. <laughs> I think that's coined in that workout world. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. <laughs> any, fi- any final words for anybody listening, Teresa? Or in, and I want to be able to, I want to give you a, a second to give your information to all of our listeners as well. I, I want to say that um, you can't go wrong with a Boston Connect agent. You can't. If you're listening and you are wondering what you should do, whether you should buy or sell or rent, I don't care. Call Boston Connect because our agents truly are above and beyond, and it's because we care about you like your family. When you care Mm -hmm. about people like family, everything else is better. Yeah. Very well said, Teresa Roth. We appreciate you. Should we start calling you Auntie? Auntie. Auntie. Auntie Auntie Auntie. Teresa. Auntie. Auntie. Most people call me Auntie. (laughs) (laughs) All right, new one. Teresa, why don't you give all your contact information to our listeners, please? I am at Boston Connect, but my cell phone is probably the easiest and best to reach me, 781-801-6636. Can you give that one more time? I would love to help. Give your phone number one more time. 
781-801-6636. All right. Well, thank you so much, Teresa, for listening to us and for calling in. We love getting callers. And we love you, Auntie. I love it. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Awesome, awesome. Thanks, Teresa. Okay, have, have a, a good, good night. Drive thank safe. you so. Ooh, okay. If you want to call in just like Teresa Roth <laughs> and get your five seconds of fame over here, 781-837-4900. Or if you're shy, of course, you can comment on Facebook. Um, but yeah, that was Teresa Roth. She's a full-time real estate agent here at Boston Connect Real Estate. Um, if you didn't catch her contact information, you go to bostonconnect.com and you can find all of our info there. Um, but if you want to listen to any of our past shows, you can go to talkrealestateroundtable.com. You can go to your podcast app or Spotify, um, Apple. What are you laughing about? Uh, and type in <laughs> Real Estate Roundtable or any of our names. You know what I say? Because we're so famous down here. <laughs> oh, my God. We're being silly. Yeah. Um, sorry. I had a, I, I looked up at myself, and I think I might look like an alien. But I look I've like al- a marshmallow. I've always said that, like, if you see my baby picture, you know the picture that they used to take of you when you were a brand new baby at the hospital? My eyes were completely black, and I had absolutely. I think no a lot hair. of babies' eyes when they're born are very dark. I look like an alien, so I, I might be. I, I mean, aliens are here. We we all know that now. So I think all newborns look like baked potatoes. <laughs> a little baked potato. <laughs> a little baked potato. Okay, um, all right, Sorry. going back. Okay, we have to get. We're gonna get kicked off. Um, okay, so uh, do you have more stats to go over? Because we only have about twenty minutes that's left, and really we haven't the, gotten I to mean, page that's really two. The biggest one. So it. we can we can certainly go into individual towns, but I think that's more of maybe doing like a webinar for everybody and Mm -hmm. kind of going over um, that. I know it's really hard to follow along with stats when we're listening in on the radio and or watching us on Facebook. So that's the biggest one is just understanding one, how to calculate your equity. And if you don't know, talk to your loan officer or talk to a real estate agent because they're going to be able to walk you through everything. Um, You know, I, you know, a comparative market analysis, so what we refer to as a CMA, it is a free tool that agents have for you, right? It's not necessarily free for us, but it's something that we want to do to add value to um, our consumers and our clients. So if you ever any questions, please feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to give you the information and um, help you figure out what the best uh, situation could potentially be for you. Should you sell? Should you um, use the equity within your home? Mm-hmm. Well, let's get into that. So you, you, you know, talked about how you get to figuring out your home equity. And um, so it, did you say what home equity actually is? Yeah. So it's how much value is um, essentially in your house. There you go. Um, how do you build equity in your home? So there's a couple of things we talked about earlier. The simplest, um, the most basic way is to pay down your mortgage. So make your mortgage payments on time um, and make extra mortgage payments. So something that Sam and I strive to do is we make um, one extra payment a year um, and that helps pay down our mortgage quicker, which garners us more equity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, also making home improvements. Making home improvements. So um, big equity drivers. And yeah. You give me sort of your top, like what, if you were to take equity out of your home, what, what money or what, what would you spend your money on to improve your home so you can get that equity back? So thinking of my house, there's a lot. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but the biggest equity drivers are, um, usually your, your cosmetic improvements. So kitchens, bathrooms, additions, that's what tends to give you garages. That's what tends to garner you the most amount of equity per the dollar amount spent. Mm. So if you're, you know, you won't, everybody always thinks like, all right, I'm going to redo my kitchen in order to sell it, to put it on um, the market. So if you spend $20,000 to redo your kitchen and then you immediately go and sell it, you don't necessarily gain all that equity, that $20,000 that you just invested potentially on like dollar for dollar when you sell it. Mm -hmm. But if you spend $20,000, live in the house for a couple of years, you've enjoyed the house, you've enjoyed your new kitchen, and you've also garnered some of the equity back and let the market na- naturally increase you. Well, that sort of goes into like what we've talked about on previous shows is like, if your intentions are to sell your home within the next year or two or whatever, mm-hmm. You don't need to spend that kind of money to like redo your kitchen because odds are you're going to be redoing your kitchen the way that you want it. 
And, and when you want to redo the kitchen that you are then going to live purchasing? in? Yeah. So, you know, why would you do all these renovations in your taste and liking if you're not going to be able to enjoy them? Because let's face it, not everybody has the same style, taste, likings of, of anything, really. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so that if your plan is to move in the soon in, in the immediate, we never recommend doing that type of thing. You know, there's, there's little things that you can do, like we've talked about recently like reglazing tile in your bathroom that's fairly inexpensive and something that sort of brings your bathroom back to life like there are little things like that that you can do that that you you know that will improve your home Mm -hmm. uh when listing it but if you're going to be selling your home in the immediate we don't recommend doing like full renovations yeah Unless you're like a flipper. (laughs) Well, so I'm so, I'm literally, you're on the same wavelength with me. I'm so glad you brought that up. What we see a lot of too is, and the reason we say, yes, kitchens, bathrooms, master bathrooms, additions, that really is what garners you the most amount of equity. And it typically does so very quickly. Um, Again, not necessarily dollar for dollar, but quickly. And that's why when you go into a flipped house, and you, uh, I think after three and a half years of being on the show, like y'all know how I feel about a flipped house, I do not love them. Mm. Um, and the reason is, is they tend to focus on the cosmetic and not necessarily the structural. So for example, there was a property that um, clients of ours went into with me um, over the weekend, and I won't say the property address, but it was beautifully redone. So it had the white kitchen with the quartz countertops, and you know, um, it was... Uh, a laminate flooring but it was a higher end laminate flooring um or the it, i shouldn't say higher end it was just um an appealing color that kind of looks like the hardwood very trendy everything mm-hmm. white and bright and light and open and it was beautiful but structurally we got down to the basement and there's concrete blocks that were kind of pushing away there was one wall that was bowing out entirely the chimneys falling off and what they did was took um, a PV, piece of PVC trim and kind of jammed it in between the siding and the chimney itself. Yeah. And it's like, okay, we so the roof is older, the roof needs to be replaced. So what they did is went into a house that needed to cosmetically be updated as well as structurally update, updated, only took care of the cosmetics, and now they're going to reap the benefits of those cosmetics. But somebody else, this buyer who's going to purchase this house, which is already under contract, which is crazy to me, um, is going to take on all of these structural hazards that hopefully a home inspection is going to bring to light. Hopefully they're doing a home inspection. But all of those items that I just mentioned, so the structure of your house, your chimney, your roof, they don't necessarily garner you equity. Yeah. You know, those aren't big equity drivers. So you're just kind of now, (laughs) you bought the house at a high as a buyer, and now you're dumping more money into fixing things that aren't going to reap you the benefits um, later on down the road. Yeah, nobody. I got mad. Yeah, I got mad about nobody that. says. Uh, you know, uh, my chimney was falling off. Now it's not. Okay, well, okay. So how? What about this? <laughs> what about this ticket? <laughs> what about this ticket? <laughs> like, I personally, if I was purchasing home, I would rather it be structurally sound because love, all love. the all the the things in the kitchen and the bathrooms, like I can change that. You can change that over time. I'd rather something be ugly. Like, and I'll use the word ugly and maybe not on trend, but at least I can make that. Like, I would rather know that my house isn't going to fall over if it gets too windy outside. Like, that's that's what's important to me rather than having a PVC pipe holding up, you know, the side of the house. Well, so and and that just proves why. And I know we're getting a little bit off topic here, but we are talking about like the equity within your house and how to get it. It is so important, especially now, because obviously this property, if it just came on the market, um, I want to say like Thursday, it's already under contract as of today. I checked in on it this morning and there, I, I would almost venture to say that they had multiple offers on it. I'm sure they did. The open house was jam packed over the weekend, very desirable price point, you know, very attainable. I'm hoping that that buyer had their wits about them to have a home inspection. Yeah. Or or was somebody that's savvy enough to understand these things because now if this person just overpaid, overshot what the market was willing to bear for the house because they were in a multiple offer situation getting emotionally, you know, caught up and then doesn't have a home inspection, I mean, you're opening a big can of worms there. So, yeah, I was literally walking around the house in the most respectful way and I'm like this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. 
<laughs> in your professional opinion. <laughs> yeah, I was like, in my professional opinion, this is going to fall down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, so, I mean, there's a, I guess there's a couple of different things. So what were we saying? You could use, there's a couple of different things or ways you can use your, um, home equity, right? Mm -hmm. So there's the HELOC, which is a home equity line of credit, Mm -hmm. um, which is essential. I believe, and I don't, I I truthfully am not very well versed on this, but I believe it's essentially borrowing against the house. Um, And then there's your cash. If you need it. If you need it. So you like borrowing against the equity within your house and withdrawing. Um, And then there's um, a cash out refi. Which I can't remember. No, we did not. We did not do a cash out refi. Sam and I just recently we did it. We did a home ec- equity line of credit. So we're borrowing against the equity that we have within our house, meaning we have to pay it back. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason you would do something or things that you could use that HELOC for, some people would use it to um, pay, um, use for an investment property. Right. So that's that's Sam's ultimate goal. Sam wants to purchase an investment property. So he is borrowing against the equity within our house so that he can purchase or we can purchase technically because it's our equity. Uh, (laughs) And I'm doing air quotes and I don't know why, but Mm. our equity um, to purchase an investment property or some people would potentially do it to pay off student loans or. what else? What else could you use it for? Don't use it to go on a vacation. Would you or use to it make, to, to, make, to do to make home improvements? Home improvements. Yeah. So that's what I would like to personally use it for. Some of it, a little bit. You know, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. then because so if you use the HELOC, the you know the equity within your house to just gain yourself more equity, that's a double bonus, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you want to you want to use it to improve your financial gain. What you don't want to do with it is pay for a wedding oh <laughs> are you smirking because that's kind of what you want to do or, or... Like, can we just use like a little bit just in case but it's you really want to use it use it as a way to improve the property and or um potentially gain more property well there are the some market, things that you need to do at your home stock because you're going to be getting married there so yeah. that's part of New your budget death. <laughs> that's part New of your budget fence. same well um thanks for advocating for me i appreciate it yeah hopefully he's listening does he listen every tuesday (laughs) he does sometimes okay (laughs) i think i think he hears my voice like enough that he doesn't want to listen to me on the radio show too yeah he's like he's probably like oh gosh he knows exactly when we're coming home after (laughs) this hopefully he has dinner made oh what are you guys having for dinner i don't think he has dinner made at all okay um all right so moving back to this uh okay so okay so you can pay off your can you pay off your current mortgage or is are we moving on to something else no 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 we don't have to move on okay i don't so i believe you can i believe you can but i don't i don't quite understand and if anybody's out there um and it's only because it's not it's really not my wheelhouse in that sense um I guess I should know. Um, I would think I would think you could, but you're still when you, not on a not on a HELOC though, because you're still making payments on it. So if you use the equity, if you use the money, mm-hmm. you have to make a payment. You're paying yeah. it back. Um, it's just like a it's like a loan against the equity within your house. The cash out refi might be where you can use it to pay down your your mortgage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, um, pay down credit card debt. Pay down credit card debt. Hopefully pay off nobody... your car. The, on, the, on this, it says boats and RVs. Are you interested in buying boats I think and RVs, was, multiples? Well, so I think that was Sharon. because So when a lot of people back in 2010 were underwater, and in, well, to, through 2008, 2010, with the no doc loans, the robo loans that everybody was seeing. Um, one thing that she had noticed, she was in the real estate industry at the time I was not, um, was that a lot of people were using the equity within their house to go on lavish vacations and to um, buy a boat or buy an RV. So they're just using the equity within the house and not protecting that asset so that they can go on and do other things with either a non-asset or a depreciating asset. 
Mm-hmm. That's the difference between depreciating and appreciating, right? You're, mm-hmm. You want to continue to keep your home within realistic terms. Um, you can't really necessarily control the market, but continue to appreciate over time. That's the long-term investment aspect of it. So, yeah, boats and RVs, that was her. Yeah, I think parents sometimes take out money to send their kids to college, yep. too, um, or to go on extravagant trips. <laughs> Hopefully I'm sure that happens. I'm, I'm sure it does. <laughs> and I mean, to to each his own. It's just recommendations as to, you know, if, you, if you're comfortable with it. But I think a lot of people don't spend the time researching, you know, the ramifications of, you know, the pay, what you have to pay back potentially and or what it means to borrow against that equity. Um, yeah, because also we're, we have to think about interest rates as well. So yeah, and there's different interest rates for yeah. a HELOC. Than they yeah. are for your standard mortgage. <clears throat> and uh, there's, I mean, I was just thinking, like, when I refinanced my car loan, you know, I still, in my head, I'm still paying my original car payment. But because my credit card had a higher interest rate, I just used that, the money that I was saving monthly from my car payment and was paying additional of what I normally pay with my credit card. Mm-hmm. So it could pay it off. Um, so, you know, there's, there's you know, interest rates to, to think about as well with, you know, taking money out anywhere, um, moving it to somewhere else. But I feel like we're sort of both on the same page. And I know we just got the, we have about five minutes left, um, that, you know, the most, the smartest thing to do is to invest in either the property that you currently have or an additional property with that money. If you were to take it if you wanted to grow if you Some wanted to grow don't necessarily want to yeah grow. it might it might, you might be in your life at the point in your life where like you know that this is sort of where you're going to be for the next x amount of years and i don't <laughs> want to be rude but like you might get to the point in your life where you're like okay you know my kids are grown and out like i only have to we only have to worry about ourselves type of thing or, or worry about myself and sort of you live off of that money and mm-hmm. you know they might not be concerned about you know buying a second property or they don't care that their or bathroom the second is property might be the retirement property yeah. now you could use that too yeah um but you do have to pay like you do have to pay it yeah you gotta you gotta pay it back yeah just Somebody, be smart about it. Somebody's got to pay it back. <laughs> Not me. Not me. <laughs> oh, ain't me. Um, but, okay, so we only have a couple minutes left. So any final thoughts or anything having to do with with this, with finding your, your home's, home's equity? If you don't know what equity you have in your house, research it. Mm-hmm. Talk to a lender. Talk to um, a, a real estate agent. They can help you figure out what your options are potentially and how you can be using that money to to work for you. Yeah, um, that would be. And my we have plenty of recommendations as well. I mean, we've had a number of of loan officers, um, even people from the banks, like every you know, we've had people on the show in the past. So you can um, either look up those shows on TalkRealEstateRoundtable.com or you can give us a call. Um, Mary, give your cell phone number. Oh, me? It sounds fake, but it's real. It's real. Actually, so I gave it to the the girl at Kingston Fire Department today. She goes, wow, how'd you get so lucky? Someone liked you. So yeah, somebody Um, called called the office the other day about Cochise and I gave your cell phone number and I like hadn't said it out loud in so long that I was like... Did I give her the right number? <laughs> like, it is. It is totally real. It is 774-444-7761. Yep. Um, and Sharon's number is 781-294-4848. You can reach me here at the office. Um, so if you want to talk to us or even Teresa Roth, who called in tonight, or Ginny Wandel that we talked about and had a nice lunch with today, um, 781-826-8000. You can go to bostonconnect.com and find all of our information there. Mary, any final thoughts? I know we missed Sharon tonight, and hopefully everybody liked us. We were a little <laughs> silly tonight, but... It, when um, are we not? Like, we're trying to, you know, let our personalities out. Get loose. <laughs> get loose with it. I'm also very, very hot in here. Yeah. I decided look to at my layer, ears. layer if you're up on Facebook, on three look at my ears. <laughs> um, no final, no real final thoughts outside of I think the spring is going to be really, really busy. I don't think people are going to be losing equity over the next year. So it would be a great opportunity for you to potentially, um, you know, make it work for you. 
Yeah. That would be it. Yeah. And, and let us help you. Let us help you. Let us help you. Thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you for listening. Again, bostonconnect.com. You can like us on Facebook and Instagram, Boston Connect Real Estate, McNamara Broker Team. Thank you guys so much for listening to us. We hope that we did a great job. And Sharon's upstairs, so we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.